Okay, let's go over the original post test together. The redo test will look just like this, except that there are different numbers. So the first question says, given the benchmark fraction of one half, compare the fractions five sixths and two fifths. And above it, we have a number line where it shows zero, one half, and one. A benchmark fraction is a fraction that we should be able to visualize. Most of the kids are pretty good at visualizing what half of something is. So 5 6, I know that half of 6 is 3. So 5 6 is bigger than 1 half. I know that half of 5 is 2 and a half. So 2 fifths is less than 1 half. Therefore, I know that 5 6 is greater than 2 fifths. Number two says to shade in three-fifths of the fraction bar below. Three out of the five squares should be shaded in. The next part says use the fraction bar below to shade in an equivalent fraction to three-fifths and then name the fraction. Students can look and shade in the same amount. The same amount, pretty close, it's not perfect, is shaded in for both fraction bars. This one is showing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 out of 7, 8, 9, 10 parts shaded. 3 fifths is equivalent to 6 tenths. The last two questions on the front page have us comparing 4 sixths and 5 sixths. I know that if the denominators are the same, I can just look at the numerator to see which one is greater. 4 sixths is less than 5 sixths. The next one has numerators that are the same. I know that if I take a circle and I divide it into six parts and another circle and divide it into eight parts, that these eighths are smaller than these sixths. So three sixths is greater than three eighths. The bigger the numerator, the larger the value. I'm sorry, I meant to say the bigger, the smaller the denominator, I apologize. The smaller the denominator, the larger the value of the fraction. If I were going to share a piece of pie with one person, we could each get one half. My denominator is two. If I were going to share the same pie with four people, we would each get one fourth. My denominator is four. One half is bigger than one fourth. The smaller the denominator, the bigger the piece. So 3 sixths is bigger than 3 eighths. This front page says level two. That means these are all level two questions. These are things that students should have been comfortable with by the end of third grade. Now, we all know that last year we did not finish third grade in a normal fashion. So I'm feeling that students were not quite prepared to move on from these level two questions. Students can miss one on this page and score a two, which means that they have mastered the third grade content. Now this page is the level three questions. The level three questions are what a student needs to be able to do by the end of fourth grade. To be a level three, students could not miss more than two on this page. So they would have had to have already missed one or zero on this page and then they could only miss one or two on this page to be a level three. Students who aren't a level three will continue to take the test until they master the skill. This question asks which fractions are equivalent to two sixths. Our students know how to find an equivalent fraction. We use a chant that sounds like this. To find an equivalent fraction, multiply or divide the numerator and denominator by the same number. So if I wanna know if one third is equal to two sixths, 
I can put down the six and I know that three times two is six. That means to find an equivalent fraction, I also have to multiply one times two. One third is equivalent to two sixths, so I need to put a check here. If I wanna know if two sixths is equal to 10 thirtieths, I again need to put down my six. I know that you have to do 30 divided by five to get six. So I need to do 10 divided by five, which gives me two. That means that 10 thirtieths is equivalent to 2 sixths. Now, what about 4 eighths? Let's put the 2 down from the numerator. I know that 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 eighths is equivalent to 2 fourths, which means it is not equivalent to 2 sixths. 16 48. I know that six times eight is 48, or 48 divided by eight is six. 16 divided by eight is two. 16 48 is equivalent to two sixths. And finally, six tenths. Again, I'm going to use the numerator two. Six divided by three is two, and I can't do 10 divided by three. So that is not an equivalent fraction. There are three equivalent fractions to two six. Remember when taking, answering a question like this on tomorrow's test that you need to look and check each fraction because there's more than one right answer. Generate three equivalent fractions that are not equal to one that have denominators of four, eight, and 64. That means I cannot do four fourths, eight eighths, and 64 60 fourths. I have suggested to the students that they start with a one and make the first fraction one fourth. Now on tomorrow's test, these will not be the denominators, but you can use the same concept. Four times two is eight, so I need to do one times two to get two. Eight times eight is 64, so I need to do two times eight to get 16. One fourth, two eighths, and 16 60 fourths are all equivalent fractions. Number seven, compare the following fractions using any strategy and explain your strategy. So, students can solve this in many ways. They can use a common denominator, which in this case could be 24. 8 times 3 is 24, and 6 times 3 is 18. 6 times 8 is 24, and 5 times 8 is 40. 40 24 this doesn't look right, 8 times 3 is 24, and 6 times 3 is 18. 6 times 4 is 24, and 5 times 4 is 20. That looks much better. Now, 20 24 is greater than 18 24 Most students are enjoying using the butterfly method to compare fractions. That means they need to cross multiply. Six times six is 36, and eight times five is 40. They need to use the greater than symbol to show that because 40 is greater, 5 sixths is greater than uh, 6 eighths. However, they cannot show, answer this question with I used the butterfly method or I cross multiplied. This method is a shortcut and while it is easy and ensures that we will usually get this correct, it doesn't show that we understand fractions. So students need to either use a common denominator, which I have told them the reason this works is because six times eight is a common denominator. So this is really comparing 40 48 to 36 48. So students can answer this question. I know that five sixth is greater than six eighths because 40 48 is greater than 36 48. An easier explanation, and one that a lot of the students are liking, is that we know that 5 6 is greater than 6 8 because 
5 sixths is closer to one whole. If we had a number line, 5 sixths would be closer to one than 6 eighths. So either of these is an acceptable explanation, but students cannot say, I cross multiplied or I used the butterfly method to explain how they know which one is greater. They need to show that they have an understanding of what a fraction is. Number eight, convert four and two thirds to an improper fraction. We've been using the MAD strategy. The MAD strategy stands for multiply, add, and then put it over our denominator. We multiply first, we go around in a circle, three times four is 12, then we add two, which makes 14, and we put it over the same denominator. It asks us to show our work, so we can just come over here and show that we multiplied three times four plus two equals 14. 27 fifths. We have talked a lot about this line. This line means divided by 27 divided by five. Five can go into 27 five times. Then I need to subtract five times five, which is 25, and that leaves me with two. We say bring the remainder up and put down the denominator. Our denominator, when we go back and forth from mixed numbers to improper fractions, the denominator doesn't change. 27 fifths is equal to five and two fifths. Finally, we have convert seven to a fraction. If this line means divided by, then I just need to think of two numbers that when I divide equal seven. I have told the kids multiple times, the easiest one is seven over one. I could also do 14 over two, 21 over three. The options are endless, but I have pretty, I've said over and over, if you can't think of another one, just do seven over one. Some kids are getting confused and turning in one over seven. Remember, this needs to be an improper fraction if it's going to convert to a whole number. This is an important one. One fourth, this is something we have spent a lot of time reviewing. We have talked a lot about our decimal place values. This is the ones place, and then we have our decimal point. One to the right of the decimal is called the tenths. Two to the right of the decimal is called the hundredths. One fourth, I have been telling the kids to think about it like one quarter. A synonym for one fourth is one quarter. And it makes sense because four quarters make up a dollar. Each quarter is worth 25 cents. The students are getting pretty confident and knowing that we write that as 25 hundredths. One fourth is a synonym for one quarter. Now, what if we have three-fourths? That means three-quarters, 25, 50, 75 hundredths. And that is how we write that. This decimal is called 67 hundredths. If it goes to the hundredths place, then we say hundredths after the, after the number. We can write that as a fraction just like this, 67 hundredths. Finally, we have a mixed number. It's five and six tenths. When we write a decimal, our whole number goes in the ones place. The decimal point says and, five and six tenths. That is how we write it. This is the tenths place, so we say six tenths. On tomorrow's test, there will not be any level four questions. Level four questions are things that they will learn in fifth grade. Some students are ready for these and they learn them pretty quickly and easily with just a little bit of instruction. But when we do a redo test, we only focus on the level two and the level three questions. Feel free to send me an email if there's anything I can help you with. Please make sure to sign your child's test and have them bring it back to school tomorrow.